Hello, and today on the show, I've got a wonderful guest, somebody I've wanted for a long time. He is, what a talent he is. Please welcome the fabulous Mr. Anton Dupay. Don't forget, you can hear the full-length, longer version wherever you get your podcasts. Well, that was confusing, wasn't it? Because, uh, you know, let's, let's say it now, elephants in rooms. All the time I get told, you look like Anton Dubeck. Never. Well, you're, you're, I've always said that you're a devilishly <laughs> handsome fella. <laughs> yeah. I've, hey, I've, look, here's some coffee for the devilishly handsome there man. There is. Thank you ever so much. What a lovely man. Can I tell you this straight away? Mm -hmm. I, I think you're great. I just want to say this to you now because I think you're just wonderful. Mm. And I... I'm wondering where this I is going. I started on Strictly Come Dancing... And I danced with Leslie Garrett, the yeah. wonderful Leslie Garrett, my first partner. And I went to see a show of her. She was doing it during the, the show. She was sort of doing some shows as well, so during the run of the show. So I'm in the foyer, and this lady of a certain age came up to me and went, oh, she said, I think you're great. And I went, thank you very much. That's lovely of you to say. I thought, oh, no, I've cracked it already. This is earlier than I expected. Because this was the first run of first Strictly. First series. <laughs> and she went, oh, sign this for me. So I signed the programme. I said, lots of love, Anton de Beck. And she looked at it and she went, what's, what's what you done there, dude? She says, no, come on, stop messing about. She signed it properly. I went, no, it's my, it's, I, it's my name, Anton. No, come on. She said, I know you're funny. Come, stop messing about. Sign it properly. I literally had to... <laughs> <laughs> Lots of love, Rob Brydon. Actually, sign my name. All right, so, you know, you've got a lovely signature, by the way. And a couple of kisses. And off she went. Thank you. She said, "You, you're so messing about." She said, off she went. Happy as Larry. I thought, hmm. Well, the thing, the thing I get is, is when Strictly's on, <clears throat> um, the, on Twitter and social media, it'll be, uh, "Hey, what? I didn't know Rob Brydon was doing Strictly." Or, or it'll be. This Anton Dubeck, he's one of Rob Brydon's new characters, and it's something I I use it in my uh, in my act. It's a nice thing, and we we met first of all years ago at a, at a do in Ealing. Uh, you won't remember Crikey. this. It was uh, Lorraine Hegacy. Crikey, yes, it was. Had a do at her house. Yes, um, in her house. That's right. That's right. And that's where that's where we first met. That's a, that's a long that's a long time ago. That is a long time ago. She was, of course, she was the. Uh, I think that could be somebody, her. Actually, somebody is buzzing. Ringing. That could be me. Who agent. is it? Well, Just I've always thought of Anton Dubeck as the ultimate professional. I want to tell you that he came in today, a little bit late, but we, anybody can be late. He came in and he was charm personified to every person here in the room. It was lovely to see him. This has rocked me <laughs> to my core. Oh, um, so, I'm mortified. I'd expect it of Tonioli. I'd expect it of Revel Horwood. Of course. But I wouldn't expect it of Dubeck. I have to be honest with you, I've, I've sort of let myself down. I think the giddiness and the excitement of being here today with you mm. has thrown me off somewhat. Yeah, yeah. I, um, shall, I, shall I turn that off? Would you, would you mind passing that to me? Maybe I'll turn the whole thing off. I, I, I could put it on something soft. So no, I'm going to turn it off. No, I think we've... And, and, uh, Anton, I'm, I'm leaving this in because this is showing a wonderful human side. To, to somebody who I think people put on a pedestal and think he's not like us. He doesn't have our everyday problems. Well, it's there. It's done. It's done. I, and I love a pedestal. <laughs> It'd be so, wouldn't it be nice? Wouldn't it be nice? Well, oh. it's lovely to see you. It's lovely to thank see you. Thank you for you. doing this. Um, we, we Specifically, we're going to talk about an evening with Anton Dubeck, which, is, which you've been doing and you're coming back to in... Uh, uh, in September, mm -hmm. okay, v very exciting. But there's lots I want to talk to you about because we run into each other at different things. We always have a laugh. We always have a little photograph and we put it on social media and mm -hmm. say I was beside myself, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. <laughs> um, Every time it's been laugh. I was surprised. I didn't know because you strike me as very sort of London, very sort of estuary, sort of you know, oh, I'm not love and all that stuff. But you come from very exotic parentage. Yes. Yeah, I, I was I was born and uh, brought up in Seven Oaks in Kent, but my mother is Spanish and my father's Hungarian. And th so they... where has the Hungarian and the Spanish gone? Surely there'd be some of it left in you. Well, it was I. Uh, 
No, not really. The problem was, of course, is that English was the first language in our house because if both of my parents were one or the other, then the the first language would have been that language. But they spoke English together. Oh, I see, yes, of course. So to each other. So it became the first language. So although I spoke Spanish and Hungarian when I was young and growing up, I sort of didn't. So when did it start for you? So you've got this exotic parentage, but you're in Seven Oaks. Mm. What sort of a kid were you? Sporty, outdoorsy, you'd have been the same. No, I was not. You look at it. I'm not. I wasn't sporty. I was. I was the arts and and funny voices and school plays. From 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 a wee fella. From, from pretty small. It was sports day. I did the commentary. That is me. I was making wry comments on the on the public address system. Why does why why we why did we not already know that <laughs> we were out all the time? It felt like it was always summer as well when I was growing up. I don't know why. Maybe I've got this sort of rose-tinted spectacles of, of growing up. But we lived near, a, we'd call it the paddock, but it was like a, a playing fields and stuff. So we would be there playing football and kicking balls and tennis and cricket and all sorts of things, riding bicycles. So it was all outdoorsy, through the woods, climbing trees, quite, you know, mm. that sort of thing. And that, But that's what we sort of lived for, really. Academically, not great, but I was because I was going to be out doing stuff. When and you say not lighter. great, how did you do with your O-levels? Yeah, quite badly, really. What? Okay, you being very evasive. How how badly? Well, I didn't take any. That's pretty bad. Yeah, but they started the. They I st- didn't know that was an option. No, what it was in my school. Now, as boys, it turned out, you've got to work hard. Boys, it. girls, you've got to work hard. Oh, but here's the other thing. Listen, if you don't fancy it, <laughs> that's fine as well. Have the summer off. How do you mean you didn't do them? Well, they started on the first day of the exam period when I when I was in the what we used to call the fifth year. That's right, fifth form. Reason. Yeah, it was like the end of May or something. About now, June sort yeah. of time, and I didn't go in. Right, I sort of left. I voluntarily left school. Right, and that was that. Oh, there we are. Then that, that was, was that. that. That was that. And how did Hungarian father and Spanish mother feel? Well. Do you know this is, this is quite an interesting conversation? I've never I've never spoken of this before in my life. That's what this, you get on Bride and This is the great. absolute exclusive. I was hoping to do some gags with you, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I uh... <laughs> no, this is in, in the psychiatrist's chair. That's what this is. Should I lie down? I don't know. Um, yeah, I. That, but they were because they're. Well, think of it like this: they've come over from uh, from foreign countries, which, I mean, Hungary was a communist country. Spain was involved in, was during Franco's time. So mm. they've come over to find a better life. They, they're both working two jobs. And it's a hard time. It's a difficult time. Uh, we're going through the 70s. You know, when uh, I was born in the 60s, we're going through the 70s. The 70s wasn't a great time. In, uh, in it depends the UK. how you look at it. Uh, I mean, the, you know, it was pretty. I mean, great for music and stuff, but for, yeah. for working people, it was yeah. Difficult. Okay, with yes, okay. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. three day weeks and all that sort yes. of thing. So politically, but it was slayed at the top of the charts. Slayed at the top of the so, charts. You know, so on the upside, it wasn't all bad. And was Liverpool it? winning the European Cup, the Wurzels. Wurzels you know, was tremendous. There was a lot of. There's a lot of good stuff. There's some. There, there, you know, there is some great stuff. David Soul with Silver Lady. I mean, oh. you know, these are lovely memories. That's normally the sort of person I would dance with on Strictly Come Dance. There's <laughs> a gag. Thank you very much. I thought I would have got more. Um, yeah, it's a difficult room. <laughs> a very difficult, difficult room. This is a tricky room. So what you're telling me is they, they didn't even know Didn't you. even know. Didn't notice. So, so, I just really got a job. So do, I was Doing what? I worked in a factory, my first ever job, working in a factory. Components for aircrafts. And are you, are you wanting to dance at this point? I'd already started dancing. Right. So I, I thought, well, that's what I really want to do. I want to yeah. be a dancer. Really, I want to be a dancer. I didn't know what that was, didn't know what the career path was. Wanted to be, I actually wanted to be Fred Astaire. So just to be that's clear, that you've got to, you, you're studying for your O levels. No, right? not really massively, no. Studying is sort of All right, slightly let me put too... it another way. The O levels were looming. Correct. All right, okay. Yes. You're indifferent to them. <laughs> you get to the beginning of the examination period. Yes. And you don't. Where do you tell your parents you're going? No, school period? had finished then. Only come in if you've got exams. Oh, that's, of course, I forgot. Yeah, that's right. You only go in on the day you go. Yeah, well, right. I didn't go back for the second half of a maths O level because I knew I'd done so badly on the first one. And uh, Wimbledon was on. Well, I think it's important to prioritise. So, uh, were your who, parents... Who would have been in that? That would have been a beyond board uh, era, the it? Was, it was, uh, well, no, no, but to see, by the time I did them, it was 84, I think. No, no, that was when I left altogether. 
oh, I don't know, early 80s. But did your parents know that you weren't going into school for them? No, but they, they wouldn't have known that they were going on. Your they parents wouldn't of... have known that the O-level exams were happening? No, not particularly. I suppose if you, I don't, I'd have to ask them if they knew for sure, but they wouldn't have known. They, would much more, they were much more inclined for me to go and get a job. Go and get a job, right. Go, okay. go and get a job, get yeah. a job, get a job. Because so they, they were in, uh, interested in hard work. Of that course, was their... yeah. Well, they, they'd come from these two different backgrounds. Exactly. Uh, it, Britain, even with its industrial strife, was, it was a land of opportunity. But certainly in a better place than where they were coming from. <laughs> yes, so, yeah. right. So, yes, it was the, paved with gold. The you're streets. being told that you're good at dancing, presumably. I'm doing well already. Yeah. And you know you're good well, at dancing. Well, I seem to be doing well. You can only... Yeah. I mean, I'm doing a few... I'm doing my sort of medal tests and I'm getting highly commended and I did a couple of exa- a couple of competitions and I did rather well. And, and that's where you get your sense of self from? You your go, sense hello. of this, this is who I am? Yeah, and you go, OK. I'm really glad I'm quite good at this because I really love this. Yeah. You know, the other thing of the disappointment of, I really love this, but I'm awful at it. <laughs> I get that with golf at times. But You're good at, what are you, t- no, hang on, I'm not having that because <laughs> I've played in, uh, let's get full showbiz here. I've played in a couple of things with you. I've stopped doing those now because I'm too bad. But I've played in a couple of things with you. You're very good. You play off something like six, don't you? One. Right, so you can't sit there, <laughs> and you don't need to know anything about golf to know that the, the lower your handicap, right, the better you are, okay? So so I'm something like 28, and, and he's one. You can't sit there and say, oh, I'm not good. You clearly are. Well, I'm okay. No, no, no. You but can't, no, come on. You can't be a you, one handicap. Yeah, but you want to be, there's like this, the thing about things like dancing and golf, there is no perfection there's no there is no i've cracked it no, there is one is one is very going. much in that direction though well it's i'm i'm i've you know i've i've obviously had more time at it than i should have had it's the time and you're yeah. a father now of yeah. young ones mm-hmm. it's quite hard to say off i go but especially at the weekends well yeah weekends and absolutely yeah, yeah no, i suppose so, in the, i suppose in the, in the week it's okay in the week i if i it's i'm not doing anything then mm. you know once the children go off to school yeah then, then of course psh, the time is yours down. um you changed your name and you've had, I've seen you have flack for this, but I rather admire it. I think it's quite glorious. Tell us what you did. Well, no. Uh, it's difficult really to, to, to explain it really because it, was, it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't that big a deal really for me. I wanted, I wanted to... Um, we don't have to speak about it if, you, if you're not comfortable. Well, I don't, I, I've never spoken about it because it was just a, it was a thing that was, it, that was going on in uh, at home and in life. So I wanted to start again. I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm happy to talk about it, but yeah. I, I, I fear that it might bring a downer on oh, the I'm whole sorry, proceedings. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you doing it? What to disassociate from home and stuff? In, in a I didn't degree. know that. Yeah. I thought it was just to launch yourself into the world no. of show business. No. <laughs> no. Oh. No. Oh, but, well, fair but, enough. But what I'm happy, as I say, I'm happy okay. to talk about okay. it another, maybe another time. I don't want to bring this stuff there. Uh, I didn't you know, know. I had no idea about that. Yeah. I thought that it was you going from Anthony Beck or Beck to Anton Dubeck. I thought, well, bloody hell, that takes balls to do that because it's so, you know, because then if you don't become a success in, in the world of show business, <laughs> you have a show business name. No, I'd, I'd already done that. Oh, you'd done that? Oh, when I was about 16 or something Just like before that. those yeah. O-levels you didn't do. Yeah, yeah, just as I was going to take the O-levels. Right, OK. <laughs> oh, oh, I've got oh, a better sorry, idea. Anton, I, I No, didn't, don't apologise. I, I, I didn't realise that. So you you're working um, components, different things. When does it become? When does dance become the thing that pays your bills? Oh, never. I've had tons of jobs just to fund the dancing. So you you know you're paying for lessons, you're paying for practice sessions, you're paying for suits and frocks and travel and and all those sorts of things. So so you're earning money through a job that you're funding your your dancing life you do you have an amateur career same as sort of golf used to be you have an amateur career of which you don't get paid for and then you turn professional at some stage whatever you want to do and you're basically doing the same thing but as a professional competing and still traveling having lessons all these sorts of things against other professionals but now you can earn money at it through giving lessons 
or any way you like, really, giving lessons, doing lectures, doing demonstrations, what we used to call demonstrations, where you'd turn up and demonstrate ballroom dancing, how to yeah. do or something. I was one of the first people, myself and Erin, to do a, a ballroom show on stage about 16, 17 years so ago. front facing. So front facing. So we had a big orchestra behind us. It was Erin and I. We had some other bits pieces and as well. And you choreograph everything. So you're now thinking but, of the people that are in, in front, front of you. So it was much more inspired by Fred Astaire as opposed to sort of strict old school yeah. ballroom dancing. But they, well, they were going to start this this thing called Pro Celebrity Come Dancing. Yeah. And uh, they contacted the ballroom dancing world and said, we need professionals, only eight professional dancers to partner some celebrities for this show. Yeah. And the ballroom dancing went, oh, no, we don't want to do that. No, that's a disaster. Really? We've just lived through the old come dancing. Everyone going, oh, Peggy Spencer, sequin, frocks and all that. Oh, Christ. They, they, and they said these immortal words. I was in the room and they said it. They went, well, we're going to do it anyway. So you can either be in part of it or we'll go and yeah. get some other dancers from yeah. another world, like musical theatre dancers. Yeah. And that was the moment we all, well, I certainly went, no, no, I'd, be, I'd like to be part of this. So we did screen tests. A few of us did, a load of us did a screen test. Anyway, and they picked eight. And they picked myself and Erin and Brendan Cole, of course, and, and a few others. And you've got no idea at this stage. No, we this don't know what it is. This is something that could have lasted for one series exactly. or just a pilot or something. Exactly. So and we this did. is going to change, this is going to be the biggest thing in your life. Change your life. Literally it, changed. There's your no life. getting. There's, there's, it totally has changed your that's life. That's it. Changed your life in your salmon-coloured shorts Look at me, and you know, your relaxed in a, clothing, a, a plimps old sock. So you meet Bruce, and you ended up becoming very good friends with him. How did that relationship develop? Well, we have a a, a, a feature that is of the same sort of ilk. Yes. So um, we we both got a chin. It's it's like we're a family. The three of us. Well, do you and... remember there was a time in the early days, early-ish days of uh, Strictly, when I took my family to see it? And I don't know if you remember this, but Bruce came and did a little interview with me. And didn't the three of us sit there or oh, do something? I think, so. I we think had a we did. Moment. He said, Well, now I'm going to talk to one of my favorite young, I was already, I was in my 40s, young comedians, Rob Bryan. He said, <laughs> And then we did it. And then when he threw to Tess, he came back. He said, I'm so sorry I got your name wrong. <laughs> did he impart his wisdom to you? Did yeah, he, we... what would he, give me some of the tips he gave you about show business, how you handle yourself, how you, how you navigate the business. Or I, I, I love the thing that he's, he's, he's telling, he's giving you advice. He would, uh, he, he used to speak to me about uh, writers. Right. You know everything I'm talking about mm. this. He said to he'd say, also, rehearsal. Yeah, he was a big rehearser. Massive he wanted to rehearse rehearsal. everything. Wanted didn't to he? rehearse everything. Yeah. But uh, many times. We did a song on Strictly. Uh, we did Me and My Shadow, Bruce yeah. and I. It was the greatest moment of my entire professional life. Really was, wasn't it? Most, for you. It really absolutely. was. Yeah. Most incredible moment for me because you'd work. One, you're doing something with your absolute hero. Two, you're on the biggest show on telly. Three, you're doing a s song and dance number. Mm. No one does that anymore. No, a yeah. song and dance number yeah. as a as a moment. Yeah, and you and I'm doing it with, with the Bruce. We had this little gag at the beginning, and this is why you like to rehearse because everything things change in rehearsals. You don't just rehearse the thing and do it. You, you it evolves. Yes, and so we're doing this little thing. So da 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 and then it repeats, da, 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 and then on I, and he does the little thing with the head, like that little on your cum yeah. moment, and I walk on from the rings. And I, I, he's, he stood in profile. I'm doing this now because yeah. this is a, you can't see this, but he stood in profile like that with his back towards me, and I walk up behind him and I put my hand on his shoulder and I, and I mirror his position yeah. like that. And, over his, and I do this in rehearsal, yeah. and over his shoulder he said to me, he turned his head and looked at me, in rehearsal, and he goes, not too close, I'm the star. And I and I laughed and moved back a few paces. And I was I was in bits. It was it was hilarious. Anyway, it went in. And it goes. Nice yeah, because yeah, that's really funny. Well, a similar story. Um he came, I was interviewing him on, on this show. So we'd rehearsed everything we were going to do. Then we come to the recording of it, and it always finished with a song. And I think it may have been Sophie Ellis Baxter. And she's doing a song over the far side of the stage. We're still in our interview chairs. Anyway, it gets to the end of the song. And I had traditionally stood at that point in every other recording, walked across, 
Like, good night, everybody. Thanks, Sophie, Bruce, everyone. So I go, I'm going to do that. We hadn't rehearsed this, of course. So I get up I, and I, I say to him, come, come, come on, like that. The studio is a bit dark, of course, our bit. He starts, I'm in front of him. Uh, we're walking. All of a sudden, as we get there, I feel these two hands chunk, onto my back, onto my shoulders. I think, oh, Bruce is doing a bit. No, there was a wedge or something oh. on the floor. He'd, he, he hit it and, oh, my Lord because I think he's about 130 at this stage. And and he, and my back, and I'll tell you what, he was not happy. And and justifiably so, because at that age, he said, well, we didn't rehearse it. You didn't, and, and at the time... You know, that was just like him. Yeah, at the that time, I remember thinking, like oh, well, come on. But now I will say, with the fullness of time, no, no, he was right. He, he was, was, you can't right. ask a guy, he was, how, what was he? In, I know he's in his 80s. Was he beyond 80s? 89, I 89, think, 89. Yeah. so, okay. So <laughs> I think that you was one of the, one of the last times I saw Bruce, Bruce actually time. was, um, <laughs> was, but yeah, he loved to rehearse. Right. It's over only because. Don't say that. We've got someone else coming. I heard that. If, heard, if, if, if that wasn't the, the case, at the castle, we could have carried <laughs> on. <laughs> Should we do like a part one and part two? I'd love that. I would like that. I feel like we've scratched maybe only a surface. Oh, we have. but it, and, and maybe we need to think about how we schedule these because... We should diarise it. Dara O'Brien is out there somewhere. He's a very You don't want to get on the wrong man. side of Dara no. O'Brien. You don't want to get on the wrong side of him. <laughs> Anton Dubeck speaking earlier today in London.